Today, uh, I'm going to talk about formulation of problems. Formulation is the first phase of the solution procedure. It involves definition of a problem, of the post problem, or the problem you are dealing with. How do you define it? And it involves boundary conditions and how the boundary conditions should be applied mathematically. It is an aspect of solution. And what are the boundary conditions? Or how can you find boundary conditions for the posed problem? And then what are the governing equations and how are the governing equations can be derived. These are phases of formation step. And then you need to introduce a method to solve the equations and satisfy the boundary conditions, implementation of the methods, generation of numerical results, verification, parametric analysis. These are all parts of solution procedure. But the problem has to be defined in a sound way. Its physics has to be defined and to the down equations. And the model has to accurately represent the actual conditions, boundary conditions on the structure. We will talk about the definition of boundary conditions first, and then I'm going to introduce certain governing questions. We will see how they can be derived. In the derivation, so that's uh, described in chapter five in this course. It's entitled as Formation of Problems in the Assisty. To formulate, you need to main equations. And what are the main results we have derived up until this point? That's a review of available field equations. What are the available equations? We have started with definition of strain. And main result here is on the relation between strain and displacements Components is called kinematics because it's derived by considering geometry of deformation or strain displacement relations. Epsilon ij is one over two ui comma j plus uj comma i. That's one set of equations. And how many equations do we have here then? These are differential equations. And how many equations do I have here? Now that's the effectiveness of initial notation. This conveys a total of how many equations? There's an answer. Now uh, Hassan gave the answer. Nine is right, but epsilon ij is symmetric, therefore that's actually six. Uh, you don't need extra three equations. And then compatibility relations, these are derived by considering definitions of strains given here. But compatibility relations are needed whenever you need to, uh, whenever you have to evaluate displacements from strains. And therefore, it's implemented only in stress based formulations. We will talk about this, but in general, you have 
six equations, but we will reduce it further. That's the general form of the compatibility relations. Then differential equations for stresses, which are referred to as equilibrium equations derived by considering Newton's first law here as a dynamic version of the set of questions as well. Now it involves stresses and body forces acting on an elastic structure. And generalized Hooke's law, the relation between stress and strain, can use this for stresses in terms of strains or this one, depending on the problem or application, either can be used and they are written in terms of material properties, mu and lambda. In a displacement formulation, we need strains, strain displacement relations. And there are six of these. Cooling equations, there are three of these, and for a total nine. And Hooke's law, uh, add, add another six for a total of 15 equations in the financial form. Some of them are financial form, at least. 15 equations and 15 unknowns, six strains, six stress components, and to this place. So it's a general problem. It's not to, it's not easy to deal with. But we can simplify this by considering certain simplifying assumptions. 15 equations can be simplified down to a single equation for some cases. Let's talk about this simplifications and different types of formulations. How do we work with these equations to generate solution? That's the general question. Each is written in this form. But first, we will consider definitions of boundary conditions and what are the main problem types in elasticity you can also mention this this figure shows the main problem types or main types of boundary conditions the first boundary condition type is referred to as traction condition. Here, traction on the boundary or on the bonding surface is defined as Tn. And the whole surface is S. And traction on the surface is given. That is components of stress Light stresses on that surface are known as called traction condition. On the whole surface, we apply a stress, normal stress, shear stress. The second type of boundary condition is called displacement condition. Now, on the whole surface, a certain displacement is applied. Suppose that there's that displacement is U, and that's called displacement condition. Now, the third one is mixed condition. I said, or a certain part of this bonding surface, ST. Traction is defined, and all the remaining part, SU, 
displacement is divided. Here, displacement is fixed. It's a zero. And st plus su has to be equal to total pass. Let's call a mixed condition or mixed bond value problem. We will deal with such cases. How do we implement traction conditions? That's the first question. What are the traction conditions? And how do we implement the traction conditions? Because a portion of an elastic body, it's a bonding surface. As given as a free surface, S1. This is the second bonding surface, and this is also given as a free surface. On a free surface, all tractions, traction components are zero, and a coordinate system is introduced here. Uh, loading is applied on other parts of the body. You may have loads in X direction, in Y direction. Uh, other type of bond conditions on other parts of the body, but now we will see how we can write the bond conditions for these two sources. So uh, this is referred to as a traction condition now. On a free surface. Now it means you have to evaluate traction components of traction. There are no stresses here and equate those components to zero. How do we do this? This is addition of traction. Traction at any point in a given direction and is sigma i, j, and j. Now, traction on this surface, this point, has to be evaluated. And n is unit normal, unit output normal. Uh, what's the unit output normal for this surface? For the free surface? What's the unit output normal? Yes, I'm not scared the correct answer. It's in y direction, it's j. Uh, apply it with S1. Tx, the first component of traction, is sigma xx and x plus sigma xy and y plus sigma xz and z, as general expression. And x and, and z are zero because n is j hat, it has only y component, that's one. Therefore, Tx is sigma xy. And stress free, therefore, sigma xy has to be zero. That's the first bond condition. Sigma xy has to be zero here. And second traction component here is sigma ty, and is sigma yx and x, sigma yy and y plus sigma yz and z. As it reduces to sigma yy, because n y is one, and x and z are zero. No stress applied on the surface. And second condition implies that sigma y by has to be zero as well. Third one is Tzn. And this is sigma z y has to be zero as well. T traction components are bound and they are equated to zero because uh, stress free plane on a free surface. Now, you could have written this directly. Think about uh, stress components that can be defined on such a surface. This stress component, normal stress component, could have been defined sigma y y. As free surface, therefore, sigma y y has to be zero. This first bond condition. Second one, 
Sigma y x could have been defined, but it should be zero. And sigma y x is equal to sigma x y, and that is equal to zero. And the third one is in z direction, is sigma y z. It's also shown in this diagram. It has to be zero. Therefore, in such simple cases where coordinates uh, plane or that particular plane is parallel to the coordinate plane, one of the coordinate plane, can use tangentially right on by the conditions in terms of stresses. But it's always possible to write traction as well. Now, then tell me the boundary condition uh, for this stress free surface, which stress components are needed now for the vertical surface. What are the boundary conditions for this surface? Any? Which stresses should be zero? In other words, there's a free surface. And which stresses should be zero here? What are the boundary conditions? Emre uh, wrote it. These are sigma xx stress reflection, sigma xy. And sigma x and z. They are also shown here x, 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 y, c. They have to be zero. But uh, you could have written this concerning the definition of traction. For such simple planes, you can directly write down the condition. Stresses are not always zero, of course. There are certain surfaces on the body over which we apply stress, as shown here. Well, that's another uh, problem, a beam type structure, tapered beam. And uh, X, Y system is rotated. Compressive stress applied on the bonding plane. Now there are three bonding planes for this beam. So that's one, that's two, and that's three. It's given as this problem of plane stress. We will talk about plane stress. But whenever there is plane stress, the third component sigma zz and shear components so sigma yz and sigma xc, they all have to be zero as plane stress. Uh, what are the boundary conditions here? You can start with S1. What are the conditions for S1? Any suggestions on this? What are the conditions? What should be the conditions for this one? It is a mixed problem now. And or not gave it. We implement it in terms of displacements. Not strains, but displacements are written. And this is a mixed problem. Uh, it's fixed. Both displacement components should be zero on S1. And on S1, U, V equals zero. That's called fixed condition. And then on S2, what are the boundary conditions for S2? Can you? We can specify this directly because this 
is parallel to coordinate plane. For, for such planes, we can write down the conditions directly, or we can always refer to traction equations, but let me show it in terms of tractions, what on S2. Now on S2 is the unit outward normal. It's in minus J direction. Now for NX is zero. And, and Y is minus one and, and Z is zero. What are tractions on a point on this plane? Tx, sigma xx and x plus sigma xy and y plus sigma xz and z, sigma xc zero, and x is zero. Thus, this is sigma xy and y, and y is minus one. The, so this is minus sigma xy. Traction is minus sigma xy. And check out traction, shear traction on the surface. There is no shear traction here. That's minus sigma, sigma xy equals zero or sigma xy equals zero. This is the first condition. And the second condition is written by constraint ty. What's ty? Ty is sigma y x and x plus sigma y y and y. Zero. Sorry, this one is zero. And y is minus one. And so it's minus sigma y y. Extraction. What should it be equal to? It should be equal to this stress in y direction. It's s. Therefore, the component of that vector is s. Component of direction vector should be s because it's in positive y direction and minus sigma y y equals s. So, boundary condition is sigma y y is minus s. Stress component is here at minus s because it's compressive stress. Negative stress according to our sign convention. Now, uh, but I could have written this directly. What are the stress components that can be defined? This one, sigma y y. Is it, it is compressive, then it should be minus s, provided that s is a positive quantity. The second stress component that can be defined is sigma x y. And it's zero because we did not apply any shear loading on this plane. As S1 and S2, and you should be careful with the directions of coordinate axis. And final conditions are for this surface now, the inclined surface, the boundary. It's the inclined surface. An inclined, or how can I write boundary conditions on an inclined surface? For such cases, it's always, I think, useful to consider traction equations. What are the components of traction for a point on this surface now? And you need a unit output normal. And hat is the unit output normal. What's and hat? Let me close this. Answer. 
Yes, sign 45. There's a sign mistake, I think. Uh, sign 45, I had minus cosine 45 j. That's right. It's correct. And it's no sine 45 j hat minus cosine 45 i hat. So your answer is wrong. It should be sine 45, uh, but the, okay, your sign is correct. Okay. Okay. Uh, yes, you have to change the sign. And then these are known. And x is minus cosine 45 and minus sine 45 and tx is sigma x, x and x plus sigma xy and my substitute and x and then y. Tx is minus square root of 2 over 2 sigma x plus square root of 2 over 2 sigma xy. And there is no force or stress in x direction. This has to be 0. And x, x component, and y, y component. Both of them are 0. Tx is then equal to 0, and simplifying it, you will write it as minus c max x plus c max y equals zero. Sum or a difference of stresses is obtained. And find t y. Y x and x plus y y and y substitute. Again, this form is found, it's equated to zero. This is factored out. And the second condition becomes minus sigma xy plus sigma yy equals zero. And now uh, you have traction condition on this border. And those traction conditions are you know, in terms of stresses, minus sigma xx plus sigma xy equals zero. Minus sigma xy plus sigma y1 equals zero. Any questions about these boundary conditions? Just implement it. And Shannon, there are examples in the book by set. You should consider those examples and try to derive boundary conditions yourself. Because an important one part of the problem is the specification of correct boundary conditions. I will not give you the boundary conditions. I'm going to give a certain problem. It could be a beam or a, or a disk, half plane, you'll talk about those. For each case, you have to write down correct boundary conditions in terms of displacements or stresses. You should know how to do that. Concerning these boundary conditions, we can define three separate fundamental boundary value problems. The first boundary value problem. Now, a boundary value problem consists of a Drawing equation, which is where it's, it's in the volume, and a set of boundary conditions which are valid on the boundary. That's called a boundary value problem. And the first one is a traction problem. And as the name implies, tractions, T I N, are specified over the whole boundary S. Uh, TIN is a known function, FI, over the whole boundary. Body forces are also known. And these FI are known. 
And this is referred to as traction problem. You know, stresses over uh, stress distributions over the surface of the body, but we consider it as traction distribution. The second fundamental definition is a displacement problem. And as the name implies again here, displacements UI, U1, U2, U3, are defined on the whole boundary surface. UI is equal to GI. And GI is a known function, or GI are known functions. Body forces should be known. And distribution of displacements over the bonding surface are known. It's called a bond uh, displacement problem. And the third case is a mixed problem. Here we have both stress and displacement conditions. In such a case, or a portion ST of the whole surface, we define tractions, TIN equals FI, where FI is known. And our remaining part, SU, UI is equal to GI. It's known. And ST plus SU is equal to S. This is a mixed bound value problem. Body forces, if there are any, should be given as well. And in addition to these conditions, and to these boundary conditions, we need Governing equations. That there is a governing equation, differential equation. And there is a set of differential equations. Mm. Solutions should satisfy these in the problem domain. And they should also satisfy the boundary conditions, Ti equals Fi and Ui. Yeah. There's a, is there a question or? Okay. We will talk about two main foundation techniques. The first one is named as stress based formulation. Governing equations are written in terms of stresses or Stress function, stress functions. This should be particularly convenient for stress problems. And the second type of formulation is named as displacement based formulation. Going equations are written in terms of displacements. This could be useful for displacement problems, but a stress problem or a mixed problem can be solved by displacement formulation and reverse precision is possible because uh, stress or displacement problem can be solved by stress-based formulation. This is because of the fact that displacements are can be written in terms of stresses or can be found, or stresses can be written in terms of displacements whenever necessary. But you should know how to start with a certain formulation type. How do we proceed whenever you would like to develop stress-based formulation? And how do we solve the problem by Considering the displacement based formulation, I will talk about these kinds of problems. If you don't have questions, 
can have a break now and I'm going to continue after the break. But first I'll take the attendance.